Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree really large wooden lantern with no tumbling blocks and no picture frames. We're going to use two 8x8 eight eight boxed arts. These have no decals on them. And then we're going to use one of these small boxed arts. It used to look like this and I just ripped the emblem off. We're going to use four sets of rulers so that's four total and then if you want to paint it you can if you don't want to paint it you can peel the paper off of the box art and i'll show you that in a second um, then you're going to need a binder ring the dollar tree jot brand calls them book rings and then you're going to need a gift box a square gift box this is from the dollar tree as well you're also going to need your glue gun and we're going to use gl gorilla glue sticks hot gorilla glue sticks um, and like I was saying, you either have a choice of you can paint this or you can uh, peel the paper off of your box art. But my suggestion is if you want to leave it wood looking, then pick a different small piece of box art. Do you see the box art that I have that I'm using um, is actually like the backside of it? And we're going to fill that in with glue. But if you're going to go ahead and leave it wood, I would just pick a different smaller box art. They have plenty out there. Actually, they just come out with ones that actually have succulents on them, which would be a good size as well. But what we're doing is going to create the levels that you have on a traditional lantern. Um, now, I don't have anything against Jenga blocks or picture frames. I just didn't want to go that route. I feel like there's a million tutorials on the ch YouTube uh, for those particular kinds of lanterns. So we're going to make one that's just a little different. And this one is really light and really, really usable. Like we can hold everything up with the ring. So what I'm doing here is I'm filling in the cracks on the back of this picture frame. If every once in a while you get a box art that you have to use, that's this one. <laughs> and what I'm doing is I've just put a little hot glue down, taking an old gift card and basically spackled, like leveled the glue off. Um, and I've done that around all four edges. The first thing that I actually did was I measured around all four sides of the um, the second smallest square and I'm going to repeat that with the smallest square um, but what I'm doing now is I found center by crossing over two diagonal lines and then I draw a straight line across the middle of the center and then laid my ring down where I wanted my ring to connect inside the circle and then I punched holes I did one with an awl and I just showed you that you can do one with just a box cutter or something I used my scissor to make it a little wider and then I used sandpaper just to knock off the edges um, but if you make a nicer hole than me then you don't have to worry about all that <laughs> okay so now what I've also done is I've um, added the bead of hot glue um, I like to measure around with a I like to mark around with the marker of where my placement needs to go. So once that I put my glue down, I don't have to try to figure it out again because this glue dries very quickly when it's paper on paper or wood on wood um, because it's so absorbent. So you don't have to worry about uh, relining everything back up again. Um, I just went ahead and I put it, you know, you mark it down. So once you put the glue on there, you know exactly where to place it. Um, so this is going to be the top, unless you're putting a mirror down on the bottom of the floor or if you're going to hang this up high. I didn't bother painting the inside of the top, um, but you can if you want to. And I added the paint to the top of this like I was frosting a cake. I just poured a whole bunch down and then spread it all over. And now this is the bottom piece. I ended up taking the little hanger out and it, it came off rather it came off rather easily. Um, but I just had to remove it from the big board first and then one of the sideboards. Um, I actually did end up breaking one of the sideboards off but that's okay because we're going to go ahead and glue things together later so I didn't even bother fixing it. So and then I added my coat of paint to the bottom of that. Now that is going to be the bottom of the lantern and again if you don't want to paint the bottom of your lantern you don't have to but I did so I did. <laughs> um, and now we're going to use our four sets of rulers. I felt it was very vital to me to pre-paint everything um, as far as the rulers are concerned and then um, not the tops because I wanted to have the glue fill in and then I wanted to go over whatever glue I was filling in on the stacked top um, but as far as the rulers were concerned I went ahead and I pre-painted them I just knew it would be easier than trying to stick my hand inside the lantern when it was all done to paint it uh, but again if you want to skip this step and just leave it wood you absolutely can if you want to skip this step and maybe use spray paint, you can do that as well. If you want to skip this step and paint it with a brush later, you can. That's entirely up to you. I've just chose to pre-paint it. 
So I'm making sure that I get the sides as well as um, leaving a spot at the top and the bottom. But I'm only leaving a spot on the top and the bottom on the flat side of the ruler. If you've used these rulers from the Dollar Tree, you know once you peel off the ruler, the measurement parts, it actually creates like a little step on both sides. Um, so that part I decided to put towards the inside of the lantern. So that side I needed to paint the entire top and bottom. When I get to the other side, you can leave a space at the top and the bottom where you're going to glue, um, where you're going to put glue on, which is fine. Now, this all needed at least two coats. Um, the only thing that I don't put two coats on is the rulers, and I'll show you why in a little while, because after we glue them together, we're going to go ahead and put an extra uh, coat on the outsides. Um, but I went ahead and I gave everything a good second coat, and as far as the box bottom is concerned I went ahead and I painted the inside and I gave it a really good thick coat on the inside. Now I'm using this Waverly chalk paint that was gifted to me but homemade chalk paint, spray paint, any of that stuff as long as it's not too thick and you don't have any too much buildup in the corners you will be absolutely 100% fine. All right now as you see there I didn't really get quite perfectly in the corners because we're going to glue the sticks there so I'm not really too worried about full coverage in the, in the corners there. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I got everywhere and no drippies. Can't stand the drippies. So now we're going to paint the backs of the ruler um, and again you can paint the um, back of the ruler with just uh, from the circle up I didn't bother and then I left about a half an inch on the bottom um, because that's where the glue is going to go um, to attach this to the inside of the box arts okay and then we're going to set them off to dry I think I spent more time cleaning paintbrushes today than I did crafting no I'm just kidding <laughs> so after you have your uh, basically your paint like everything completely coated um, what I did was I took the a soft bristle brush and the chalk effect really works better with a bristle brush um, there is actually a special technique to using this chalk paint that you kind of actually work in a swirly stipply motion um, but I just like the effect it looks than than the than the um, foam brush so what I do is I do the coat the first coat with the foam brush and then I go back over with the paintbrush and I just left that in here to show you guys that little bit of technique um, again it's not necessary it's just um, a little bit to just show you it just enhances the look a little bit better and I made sure wherever there was two joints um, meeting then I went ahead and I made sure I put in plenty of glue um, I, I'm sorry plenty, plenty, plenty of paint to fill in almost like spackle or almost like caulking okay now once I was done painting my last coat on the top of this, I want to make sure that I took something. I actually took a pencil and I poked the holes back in, um, the holes that we created because I didn't want them to get filled with paint and then have it dry and then have it impossible to get it off. All right. So I'm showing you here how we're going to go ahead and um, fit the corners in. Now um, these rulers are kind of thin, which is nice because you know when you sometimes see picture frame DIYs and then you can see like the side of one picture frame up against the edge of one picture frame and it, I don't know, it just doesn't feel very cohesively uniform to me. Um, so this barely shows the side piece. Um, it doesn't really make it look that much difference from all four sides. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking two of the rulers and we're going to create these like L corners already. Now if you have trouble with uh, keeping things square, you can stick your glue in there and go ahead and push it inside the corner of the box. Um, then what I did was I ran a bead of glue on the inside of the joint and then took that gift card and, and basically like you would do with caulking. I just ran the gift card in the joint. Um, the whole length of the rulers to basically make a nice seal on the inside there. And I created all four corners. But what I did do that was different is I made sure that as the ruler was laying flat, I made two with rulers standing up on the left and two with rulers standing up on the right. I hope that that makes sense. 
it wasn't a prior it wasn't a 911 to do that uh, but i wanted to make sure that if i looked at the 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 lantern from two sides they would have totally flat edged rulers if that makes any sense so then what we're doing is we're just going to slap some glue on there and we're going to glue them in the corners you have uh, my advice would be to dry fit it just to see if you have any paint that needs to get undone or glue that needs to get peeled off or something. Every once in a while, there was a little bubble of glue sticking out. And while the bubble of glue was sticking out on one of the corners, it wouldn't fit inside the boxed art really well. So I went ahead and I just took my craft knife and I cleaned off any bubbles of glue. Okay? And you want to do this to all four sides. Now, I want to show you that they're not even. Um, so what I did was I turned them over onto the top um, and then I took the two that fit perfectly and I glued them in quickly together at the same time and then I took the two that didn't quite that had like a space and I went ahead and I glued them separately individually I basically put the glue um, down in the hole and I pushed it into the corner and I did that one corner at a time until you have all four corners glued and now we're going to go ahead and add our hanger again this just takes a little bit of manipulation to get in that ring in that hole and then clamp it closed and now this is where I'm going back in with the paint like I told you before we only put one coat of paint on the rulers because I wanted to use the paint like caulking just to fill in any of those cracks that might have been left over with glue okay um, and again finishing off with the brush just gave it that extra little special something okay I also made sure at this point that I did the um, the trim around the edge of the top of the box, I didn't actually do that the first time. Basically the very, very end of the sides of the top box art, I didn't actually end up painting. So I'm gonna do that now. And now I'm doing the same thing with any cracks that are left behind. Just touch up with paint and that's it. So easy. Here's how it looks empty. Like I said, it's really lightweight, but it happens to be really strong. Um, I lifted it with the can of holders in it and stuff. This is it with my wedding bouquet in it, which I love. I'm almost 20 years married, so I was excited to be able to put that in there. Um, just to show you how it looks, a little floral arrangement. And of course, with the vases. This is the tall cylinder vase from the Dollar Tree with an electric candle in it. Um, so guys, I hope you really enjoy this tutorial as you watch the different ways that I've dressed it. Um, it was really fun to make and took like it didn't take a long time but it took me a long time to put it together I've been trying to build a large lantern for about two years now <laughs> so I'm so happy to finally have one and to be finished <laughs> it's really check it off my bucket list um, so I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial if you do give it a thumbs up if you have any questions at all at all at all please leave them in the comments down below don't forget to share this video with friends and family anybody you know who not might be interested in making one of these lanterns lanterns, learning the techniques, or just seeing something different that's not out there. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. When you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And if you happen to make one of these and you want to share it with me on social media, links to all of those are in the description box down below. As always, take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye!